So today in the shop, we worked on Joe Padula's Ducati 888 fairing. We started off the day uh, looking like it was going to be smooth sailing, but we ran into some terrible issues that basically consumed a good part of the day. We had to make two trips to get supplies. We ran out of acetone and we ate up the last of our good gloves. But it turned out to be a great day because while we, while we were out, we stopped and saw the puppy. And by the end of the day, we had gotten all the carbon fiber reinforcements in place and it was ready to dry 24 hours. So today, a lot of the decisions we're gonna make are gonna be very easy for one reason. It's 25 degrees out in the garage right now. That makes it very easy to decide. We'll wait to do the engine. I'm all keyed up and ready to do the engine, do the polishing on the engine. Not at 25 degrees though, that's not gonna happen. I, I was hoping I could go out for a ride. Turbo Steve has been sharing some good information and he's found some things and he made a little video to share. I wanted to get more data. Uh, that's going to happen very soon, but not at 25 degrees, that's for sure. So my main goal is 25 degrees, drink a lot of coffee. I have to scoop off the crap off the pond because it's going to freeze up at this temperature in a day or two. It freezes up. If I don't get everything off the pond, it freezes in the ice and it makes a mess. So it's a very easy day to make this decision. And the biggest part of the decision is going to be, I think what I'll do is I'll go downstairs and work on Joe Padula's first step on his job. And the, the part of the job that's difficult to do on this Ducati fairing is sequencing it in the right sequence. If you get the horse before the cart, you make a mess. If you, if you do, I'm going to just do it in detail. Do it the way I normally have done this in the past and hope at the end we have a better than factory new part. Not a thing I always try to do in really cold weather like this is try to sequence anything I have to do downstairs in the morning. And if I don't think it's going to warm up to ride today, not when it's 25 in the morning, but, but never do the things in the garage in the part of the day that it's the coldest. So sequencing this and this, the Ducati fairing is going to need a lot of work so the sooner we get started on it and I'm going to try to do it the important thing is the sequencing of how to do it and I'll explain that when I get downstairs it's Green Bay Wisconsin out here right now I'm looking to get out of here and go have my coffee and this is basically what I have to do every day that the pond isn't frozen because if I leave this stuff in there it's going to be a mess like having a swimming pool I guess <laughs> Except I'm not going swimming today. We're not going riding, we're not going swimming. So with the pond clean, it's time to get inside and have some coffee. I always like to do this nasty stuff and then sit down with Karen and have a great cup of coffee while I watch the birds. And our engine polishing video is going to have to wait for a little bit warmer weather. And hopefully it's coming very soon. The sooner the better. Now, if you live in a warm weather climate, you probably don't know what that coffee, cup of coffee tastes like. Oh my God, it is cold out there. Good to be in the house. So down in the shop, after a great cup of coffee, oh, that coffee, when it's this cold, that coffee is so good. Now, we had a couple of things. We finished up Rip's project. That's ready for him to pick up, of course. We did a day of polishing this muffler that we got from Luciano and our next project Today, one of the projects is going to be to get this repair started. This will be a multi-day project for sure. So the first thing I want to do is evaluate. Now, when I talk about sequencing, this is the thing I'm talking about. This is a very old part, and it's an irreplaceable part. It's not something you could run out to eBay and just buy a replacement for. And even if you did, it wouldn't be in this, in this nicer shape, except for the part that's damaged here. Now, fixing this damage, and this is because the bike has been tipped over, and here's some cracking. What I have to do, the first thing, is find everywhere there's a crack before I do any sanding or any cleaning or anything that's going to require water, I want to get some thin CA down into these cracks. Because what happens is, and this is sequencing, old e-glass, this, this part is made, and by the way, this part is really, really heavy. It has that pad on the back too. So what happens is this is, this is heavy, heavy material. And what will happen if I don't do that, some water will get in there. Then we'll trap it with some kind of repair material. And somewhere down the road, I'll have a bubble or an imperfection. So sealing 
before I do anything else to seal these cracks with thin CA will be the first thing. But the first thing I want to do even before that, I want to remove that pad off the back. Now, whenever you're dealing with collector bikes or antique bikes or things that you just can't run off and get parts for, I'm going to be real careful about trying to pull this pad up, even though it's not, come, it's not going to come up without a fight. I'm trying to get it to come up. I tried using heat on this. The glue they used is not heat sensitive. But when we put this back, we can put it back with modern contact cement. And what will happen, it will fill in all the gaps. If I can get this to come up in one piece. Not as easy as it sounds either. And now, of course, here's the nice thing. If, if this part were available, if you could just go down to the Ducati dealer and buy this pad, I would suggest, of course, buying the new pad, but I don't think that's possible. But we have plenty of modern 3M contact cements, the stuff they use to put trim in cars, that'll allow this to, to go back without a lot of drama, I hope. And I see from the way this is that it was rubbing on, I guess, the exhaust or the frame or something here. So there is some damage to this part, but We'll try to get it off as neatly as we can. But but it's real important to understand, before you go grinding and sanding and doing anything, you've got to fill those cracks. Now, if you don't use CA, I don't know what you'd use, because I've always used CA. I guess you could use some kind of epoxy or whatever. Now, I'm doing the best I can to get this off in one part, but again, this part is probably, well, it's old, that's for sure. Like me, it's old, so you never know. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't complain. It came off in one piece. And all this residual stuff, now I'm going to leave this on here because when we put this back, there's a valley and a mat, and I'll be able to put the 3M cement right in the original spots. Yeah, that's some kind of glue they used. I don't know, Italian glue. Maybe they used pepperoni or something. I don't know, but we did, we did manage to get that off in one piece, and I'll put that in storage for right now. So here's the thing. I'm going to ask Joe, and next time we talk on the phone, See if he can somehow, if this part, maybe this part here fits other bikes, maybe it's available, but even if uh, it's not, I think we can clean that and reuse it. So I'll just put that away in inventory, get it out of the way right now. So to do the first part of this repair, Thin CA, it's available from Brodac.com, and this is the kicker that accelerates, makes it dry, well, instantly. Oh, so now I want to get this sealed from the back. I want this to be sealed. Thin CA is capillary. Capillary means it's going to go down and penetrate into the molecules of the e-glass, and it'll, in essence, seal this. Now, eventually, we're going to have to grind all this off and put a reinforcement in here. But right now, we want to seal that. That's not, job one is to seal it. So it's always best if you can get gravity to work for you. This is as thin as water. It's going to penetrate into that crack and do whatever it's possible to make a seal. I'll give that a couple of seconds to dry and we'll move on to the next one now. And I'll try to show these one by one because this is a very important part of before we try to start doing cosmetic repair work. Okay, this is our second little candidate here. I just want to show this is thin CA penetrates. You let it sit. Usually the dust from a paper towel, if you have a bounty, it's better than anything else that I've found. And that all that's going to do is seal the fibers in the e-glass. And we've got to do that several times here. This is one, and then we have the big one here. And this is going to be a little more invasive to get that done. But this, this one will be exactly the same. There's a lot of damage to the part. A lot of times you think, oh, it's only a little crack. But if you don't fix it right, and we don't reinforce this from the back, a Ducati especially, a twin cylinder bike is going to vibrate, and those cracks are going to come back at some point in time. And then you got to do the whole job over if you want to have a perfect bike. Now, all of the work that we're going to do on this is time-consuming, it's a labor of love, and it's messy. But it's really, realistically, it's the only way to salvage, i got a little bit here that's it, uh, anyway, there's raw fibers, because this is 
This is old technology, e-glass technology. This is how they make boats. And it's, this is not modern carbon fiber, that's for sure. This is old technology. And if it's not done old school, I don't know. And I know you're not going to ever just go out on eBay and find this part for 50 bucks. That ain't ha That's definitely not happening. Now, this is the real bad one here. So I want to line this up as best I can. There's really not too much I can do about this other than try to get it just try to get it sealed from the back Let me show this because it's all going to have to be sanded the kicker will kick it off and once i know that's that's solid now now i'm doing all this work from the back of course now i can move this and let gravity do the rest of the work Okay, so all the back parts are sealed. Now I'm doing the same thing from the front. Anywhere I can see white e-glass, I want to seal it. Now they made these parts years ago with white gel coat, exactly the way they make a boat. And that gel coat has zero strength. It's talcum powder and resin is what it is, usually polyester resin. I don't know if this is epoxy or polyester, it doesn't matter. We've got it one way or another. We've got a bond to it, basically strip it down. And these are all the places I can see raw fiberglass. Now once this is sealed, and this is basically, the, the CA is just there to seal it, I think we'll be pretty much ready to move on to the next step. I'm looking, all of these are sealed. I think we're good to start our project. Now the first thing, is to clean the inside because I can see already there's, there's tons of crap inside here. I'll go get some simple green, start on the inside first. Now that everything is sealed, all my cracked areas sealed, first thing you never want to do is sand, grind, or paint remover anything that's got wax or grease on it because that wax and grease winds up going down into the sanding scratches. So first thing is to clean everything. Simple green is a good choice. Now, of course, the lower part of this, where grease would tend to drop down into it, twice as dirty. The other reason for doing a thorough degreasing, and you could do this with prep wall if it's more convenient, but I like simple green, is I don't want to contaminate my hands and gloves and everything while I'm working on the good side of this, doing the cosmetic part of the repair. Now, if it wasn't frozen out there, I would take this outside with a garden hose and do it, but just too cold. Anytime I can be inside, I'd rather be inside, but if I have a choice. And it's a good idea, of course, every step of the way to keep, the, keep everything as clean as possible. Sometimes that's a little easier than, easier said than done. So these are the kind of problems that you run into when you do, you know, if you ever watch the home shows, they have an old home show, they want to replace the floor, they start digging up, oh, you got termite damage, oh, you got something else, oh my God, the, uh, you know, there's alligators living under your house. Well, I started looking at this, and as I was vacuuming it up, here's what's happening. I want to show this, because this, this is really good information. This stuff isn't really attached. They use some kind of... Uh, pepperoni glue on this or whatever they did years ago. It's it really looks like rubber cement. So I'm basically going to have to take all this off. I thought I'd leave it on, but if I don't, what's going to happen? These are going to wind up in a clear coat or in the paint or in something. So an unexpected delay in this job is that I have to clean the inside of this and I'm going to try a couple different things. I have a, a gallon of prep oil and I have a gallon of acetone, but this is the kind of thing you really have to if you were to go and repair this, and now you take this outside and spray to clear, and this crap is floating around. So I think, realistically, I've got to get it clean, and this may add a day to the job. And I've got to get, that before I can even do my repairs and reinforcement with carbon, I've got to take this and get this perfectly clean. And but that is going to be labor intensive. So the first thing to see is, is the acetone going to take this off? Now, if it wasn't so cold outside, I would do this outside. Yeah, I can scrub it off. It's going to be... Well, it's not like you have a choice here. The choices are zero and zero. 
and you just gotta what this this is going to add a lot of time to the job that i didn't see this is a step i did not anticipate being this i thought i'd be able to leave that rubber on there but because the rubber is so old it's going to come off like powder and and the glue they use the pepperoni glue here or whatever they use you never know. I know back in the day they didn't have the, the cements and glues and things we have now, but when we put this back on, I'll use weather stripping glue, the stuff they use in cars, to glue the rubber around the windshield. And that'll be a lot neater and cleaner. And, and I'm hoping Joe can get a replacement part for that rubber. And maybe we can just use that for a pattern. He can just go get a piece of that closed cell rubber. Because closed cell, I might even have some. Clo closed cell rubber is a common thing. So I'm going to take a coffee break because this is going to stink the whole cellar up. By the time I get all that off, it's going to be a real mess. And luckily I just bought a full gallon of acetone, but I'm sure we'll use most of it. So I wanted to share a tip. This is a really good tip. See the garbage can is right here? A nice clean garbage can. Uh, when you, whenever you use an acetone indoors, see this, this is something a lot of people don't think about. And you've got a bunch of rags, the paper towels like this, that they still have acetone on them. So what I'll do is, as I'm cleaning this part, I'll do one little spot at a time, one little spot, one little bit. Get rid of that. Go get a brand, go get a brand new towel. Soak it with acetone. Do another part. Throw it away. But the whole idea is, as soon as you're done using the acetone, take that and put it outside. At, first off, it's a fire hazard because the fumes are in there. And second of all, it's not really good to be breathing gallons and gallons of acetone in, a, in an indoor environment. And that is a good tip. Now, I basically have all the rubber off, most of it anyway, but you can see here's the problem. This is really, it's chewing gum. Now, there's no way I can envision working on this and touching this with your hands over and over and over again and, and then going on to sanding clear or something. So I'm looking at this, and I did ne I never anticipated this would be this big of a problem. First of all, I, I've never done a fairing that had uh, this kind of glue on the inside. Usually the Japanese glue, it, it's contact cement, it comes right off. This looks like some kind of rubber cement, and it's as tenacious as can be, and I'm just I'm drowning in acetone here trying to get it off. Now, it, it, does, it never hardened. It's still rubbery, so... I don't know how I'm going to get that off. That's something I'm going to have to think about before I go any further. Because before I can re do any really repair on this, I've got to be able to get that chewing gum off. So that's going to be the next challenge. And we'll, I'm going to think about it and give it a try. i got some other products in the shop. We'll see what works. I tried lack of thinners and high penetrating thinners. I even tried <clears throat> butyrate dope thinner with no luck at all. But I did find something that looks like it may be the way to do it. I've got to soak it in acetone, and I just hope I don't run out of acetone. And see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm actually in acetone here. And boy, is this shit stinking up the house. Holy mackerel. And I've got to just keep grinding away at it and grinding away. And now, this is just, again, I've renovated three houses in my lifetime that were each 100 years or more old, and it's always exactly the same as just what we have happening here. Now what I tried, and it was not really successful, but I want to show, is once that's like that, I can scrape some of it with a razor blade. But I basically have to probably spend most of the rest of this day scraping and cleaning, and I may have to run over and get another gallon of acetone. I don't know, but this, this stuff, if I were to leave this on, this contaminates all the work that I would be putting many, many hours into this, and this would at some point in time come back and bite me in the ass so until i can get the whole part to look like that and that may take the rest of the day i don't know now this is pretty sad i've got half of it done i still have the other half to and i ran out of acetone i got to run up to lowe's and get another gallon this the only way this came off soaking it absolutely soaking it in acetone and just keep throwing the paper towels away i'll have a full garbage can of paper towels when this is done and I'm basically half done it, actually, a good time for a break. And whenever you hit these unexpected potholes, nothing's better than a cup of coffee to get you focused again. I did not expect that glue to be so hard to take off. All right, time to head out to Lowe's. A beautiful day. So one thing good about living in Rutherford, we're not far from a Home Depot or Lowe's. 
a hub, a freight, and a cycle world. So, I don't know. I wish the taxes were a little lower. Anyway, we're gonna head out, get that gallon of acetone, and try to finish up that fairing, that repair. Okay, so we're finally back. And we should have enough acetone now to finish the job. The only other problem we have is gonna be the gloves. We're melting gloves. I'm gonna run out of gloves before this job is over. <laughs> Now, I had two problems. So far, this whole day has been a problem, but unexpected, but we'll solve it, of course. This glue, what was happening from using acetone, and of course, acetone eats into those the Harbor Freight rubber gloves, and I don't have a lot left. Thankfully, a, uh, Turbo Steve supplied me with some when we were working on one of his projects. I don't remember what one, or maybe he just came over. I think he just came over like a good guy and brought me a box of gloves. But, beside the point, I don't want to run out of them. So what I did, I confiscated Karen's, these are Karen's dishwashing gloves. So I'm going to have to run the shop right at some point and, and get some more of these because it even, the, the acetone even eats into these. But we are getting it done. It's just so time consuming and there's just no way. I mean, you just can't take dynamite and get it off and it doesn't matter how you do it. Again, because you cannot replace these parts. You just can't call up Partzilla and say, oh, I got the certain Ducati and, and, and I want that part. And even if you could, I'm sure it would be super expensive. This was really a couple hours and a lot of acetone. Boy, this, you don't see it on a video. This really was time consuming. Wow. Now, this is the kind of thing you don't see on the video. You don't see how many hours. It probably was more than a gallon of acetone and a couple of rolls of paper towels to get that gummy crap off. But now we can start a legitimate repair. Now notice we're doing this. I'm not starting with the outside, the cosmetic part. The outside of this part right now doesn't matter at all. I want to get these reinforcements in. If I get these in today, I'll be really in great shape then. That'll dry overnight. We'll start the cosmetic stuff tomorrow. Now I've got a sanding drum and anywhere that I have a crack on this, I need to get the, first off, get the paint off and get this relatively smooth. So we have one mystery totally solved now. This is definitely polyester resin. I can smell it. They made this part with gel coat, polyester resin. Easy peasy. I'm going to do that to all the pieces that I need to put carbon fiber reinforcements on. Now the idea is to get it as rough as possible. I don't want to have any smooth surfaces in here when I go to put the epoxy on. I've got Everywhere that there's been a crack, I've got this roughened up and, and basically down to raw polyester resin. And the repair that we're going to do today, this part of it, is going to have to dry overnight before we work on the other side. So this is 180 grit paper and I'm just making sure everything is reasonably rough. Now I always like to put a little bit extra where that crack is because this is capillary it'll get down in there and this will make a great bond for the epoxy the epoxy bonds to ca like iron this is like a primer almost like a primer now we got several of these i call them repair areas and if we have more we'll we'll do them all pretty much the same the ca is the best way i know and i have tried to do this without ca and and the thing with buying the CA from Brodac, that's a little bit different than buying it at Home Depot. They always have, they're, they're a giant distributor, so they always have fresh. And CA has a shelf life. You should always keep it in the refrigerator. Not in the freezer, in the refrigerator. I guess like me, it has a shelf life. That's pretty funny. Okay, so we're, we're pretty much ready to put our patches in place. Now, I was just to my dentist recently, and he reminded me of something that he told me years ago. Quality dental work takes time. Well, quality Ducati work takes time, too. I guess there's something to be said. 
Now, next little trip I gotta make, I gotta run over to ShopRite and get some gloves. We're gonna need them for doing the paint remover on the other side of this, and otherwise, Karen kills me for taking her gloves. So it's a cheap, a cheap price to pay. And despite having to run for these supplies, we're still gonna get this. We're gonna get that reinforcement done today, and it's gonna have to dry overnight. Every time I get one of these errands done, I know I'm one closer, one, one thing closer to getting everything I need for this job in house. We'll have that soon. How much gun can you have? Two trips a day. Just never get. We got to get rubber gloves. Okay, we got enough gloves to finish this job. Jeez, what an ordeal. So any day we're out shopping, we have to make a little buggy run to see the puppy at the kid's house. You never want to miss a day with that puppy. Wild dog, dog on drugs. Dog on drugs. Call the drug rehab center. Oh, he's wild. He's absolutely wild. He's wild. Oh, he's wild. High energy dog. He's a very high energy dog. No biting. No biting. No biting. So we got everything we need. And we got to see the puppy. <laughs> Time to get back to work. So here's something unique about now that we have these gloves. These gloves, of course, the acetone eats them right up. And these seem to have stood the test of time. These are Karen's gloves. And now these are, I think, a little bit of an upgrade because we may, I'm not sure if we're going to use paint remover or sandpaper to get that finish off the other side. But we went through enough gloves here that I know this is, these are worth having. These are definitely better if you use an acetone than these. These are just, in two minutes, they're, they're toast. Anyway, so this is ready now. The next step on this is I've got to mix up some epoxy and cut some carbon fiber to shape and get this so I can dry overnight. Now this looks like it might be Joe's lucky day. I happen to have a piece of the rubber. This is closed cell. And it's, I looked at the stuff that, that we tore off and this is exactly the same. So we can use it if Joe wants, and I, I have a feeling he will not be able to find that rubber online, that piece, I'm guaranteed. So the fact that we have a piece, and I'm just trying to see if it's big enough, wow. Now this is material, you can, we used to make the seats for the RDs out of it. I made the seat for Luciano's 650 out of this, and, and other things. But here's the whole thing. When you buy this material, you have to buy a giant amount. And this is what's left. So what would happen is you normally would have to shell out to buy a, uh, I don't know, a 10 foot roll or something. I don't remember what the minimum was. And the shipping was astronomical. I just happen to have a piece exactly the right size. And Joe, it's your lucky day. Now, if we were going to see this carbon fiber, we'd want to use and make it cosmetically pretty. I'm not concerned with cosmetically pretty at all right now. What I'm concerned with most of all is that I get enough material on here that this does never cracks again. And I can, I can see where that is. And I've got one piece. Now I've got, I've got plenty of scraps to work with. And I'm going to try to, well, get them. Yeah, it looks like it's a, this is an incredibly lucky day for Joe. <laughs> that we have this stuff in stock. It's unbelievable. Because again, the problem with all the carbon fiber stuff is it's so expensive when you have to buy it. You, you, it breaks your heart and you only need half of it, but you got to buy a whole roll or whatever. And thank you, Dave Midgley and, and Dick Hewitt for giving us this material, basically supporting us in our effort to rule the world of motorcycling. That's going to fit perfectly. Now I got to get one piece for here and I think, I think we're ready to mix epoxy. And of course, we're going to try to get this in one piece. So I'm going to try to make a one piece patch. Make it plenty oversized, and this is the problem with all carbon fiber. You got to buy. Normally, if you have to buy this stuff, you have to buy the whole roll. Or if you buy one yard, sometimes you get reject material. But again, thank you, Dave and Dick. They have supported us in this effort, and that's that's going to be fine. So we're going to use the West System resin, and we bought a gallon of this clear hardener. For the parts we made last year's on last year's 650R restoration, 
And what's nice about this, it's this is a, about double the price at a regular hardener. It dries clear. Well, we don't care. We're not going to see these parts, but this is a great laminating resin, it, and it really does work well for this kind of an application. Now, before I mix the resin, I get this up off the table. The reason for taking it off the table like this, when I'm doing the carbon fiber work, if some of that were to drip around here while I'm babysitting it, it'll glue itself to the newspaper and make a mess. If it's up off the table, I can run a clean paper towel with alcohol over there. So it just makes keeping it clean a lot better. Now I'll mix the resin, it's a 3.7 to 1 ratio, and then you have about a 45 minute window to work, which will give us plenty of time. And having this taped to the mirror, the reason for having it taped to the mirror, it's, it gives me a nice solid work area. And it's got to be, in this case, up off the table, just so I don't have that resin run around onto the other side. And what it will do, it's not going to ruin the finish, of course, we don't care. We're going we're gonna to get rid of the finish on the other side. But what it's going to be is extra work for me to take that old finish off. We'll save a little time. Now some of the really good qualities of West, this resin anyway, some of the good qualities, oh, virtually no smell in the house. And right now the whole house still stinks like acetone. But we did get that job done. And boy, thank God that's behind us. That's not, definitely not one of my favorite jobs. And, but even on a day that we got, and by the way, this is not a critical mix ratio that you have to, uh, be down to the drop. It's about three and a half to one, 3.7. And I have never found if, you, if you're if you off a little bit, anything bad happens. But we had a giant setback today. I was thinking that rubber thing would just come right off. And you know what? It didn't. But having setbacks, I think I'm kind of used to that. <laughs> After the life I've had, the life of crime. But anyway, once, once we take care of business here, well, I don't need that anymore. Once we take care of the business of the day, we'll mix this resin up. And a couple of tips, store the resin out of direct sunlight in a nice cool spot. It'll last a little bit longer, the shelf life. And this is, this is a really a good product. Now, a couple of things about mixing up the resin. You never want to use a wooden stick or a paint stirrer. I use a screwdriver or whatever. But, and when you think it's mixed, mix it about two minutes more. It's definitely, you can't hurt it by over mixing it, but you can really make a mess if you don't thoroughly mix it. Now it's gonna go off relative to heat. So what I did is I shut the furnace off in the house. I want it to be cool here. It's about 65 degrees now. That'll give me a little extra working time, maybe about an hour altogether. And we're working later today than I normally do because we had to run around with all these errands and seeing that puppy. So what happens is now I'll, when it's cool, it'll just give me a little extra work time. And when I have everything in place, I can hit it with a heat gun, hair dryer, then put the heat on it, get it to where it's not dripping and drooling, and then I can put it aside for the night. All right, start. Here's a tip worth its weight in gold. I use a flux brush and make sure you put a piece of tape on it because what happens as you're using it, it's a razor edge, and it cuts through your glove and any epoxy. By the time you figure it out, you go to take the glove off, and it's a mess. Anyway, we got our resin all mixed, and we are ready. Now, the first thing is to get a real good, generous coat of this on, and go way out past where we think this piece is going to be. And this is West, is a laminating resin. This is made for something totally different, but since this is made at a boat material, it's actually polyester resin. I can smell the polyester resin. <laughs> and if you, if you ever know what polyester resin smells like, <laughs> that's what it smells like. Okay, and we're not concerned with appearance here at all. In fact, when we're all done, any scraps we have, we can double up. But that, if we don't do this carefully, I want that to be just buried in resin. That's the bottom line. And it's important to go, again, out past where you think this would have to go. Because I don't want to have a stress riser. I don't want it to just end in midair, and, and that's where it'll crack. Now, luckily, you know, one thing about this, these parts are so heavy, but they look like they're plenty strong. They really look like, at the time Ducati made these, they, their number one concern was that they didn't break. Which I guess is, is probably one of them good features, but, but the parts are really heavy. 
or else they sent these out to a boat manufacturer to make. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but I know to smell a gel coat. So this is going to take, again, this will be, the whole thing here will be one after another. We'll get these in place. And then I'll probably add a couple of little extra postage stamps of scrap. I have some more scraps. And then I have to babysit it for maybe 45 minutes to an hour and make sure everything is sitting down the way I want. All right, we're ready to lay this piece in. This piece can go right out over the edge and we'll trim it. Since one of the mounts are here, I want this to be doubly strong in by the mounts and that's where I'll have to be careful when I babysit it so that we get a good bond there. Now this is a time consuming part of the job. We've got all the material laid out. I've got plenty of reinforcements. What this will do is just speed up the cure of the resin. And as it's doing it, I can just do this and just make sure it gets down into every little nook and cranny. The heat lets it be more capillary, and that's to our advantage. I think this is going to be real good. But, of course, this has to dry overnight. And this was such a busy day, but I normally don't work this long in the shop, but... I wanted to get to this point again. I always, I always look at a job like this like, like a journey and there's pit stops along the way. Well, this has to dry overnight. That's the pit stop. So I'll babysit this. This will be about 45 minutes to an hour. I have to just watch that it doesn't run over the edge or do something crazy. So this was a really long day. It played out well. And all that's left now is maybe a half hour left of babysitting that. Come back in the morning and that... Now that side will be done, and we can flip it over, make a decision if we're going to sand that paint off. I know where the decals are, uh, and again, I don't know. I, I, you just until you go a test, you don't know because you, I don't know what kind of paint is on here. I know it's polyester resin, and I know it's very old paint. Maybe paint remover will take it right off. Sometime it does, sometime it doesn't. Depends on what kind of primer they used. Who knows? All, all pepperoni pizzas, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, before I end the video, and this was this was an extremely long day, I want to thank the healthcare workers. I want to thank Karen. She's making me Indian food for supper. I can't wait. <laughs> I am so hungry. This, this really stretched out. And Joe, I think we're lucky I have your that a piece of that rubber that may save the day, or maybe we can use the old one, or maybe you won't put any on at all. I don't know. That's Joe's decision. I know he's working on getting the red paint and getting the decals. And I'll be chatting with him in the next day or so. But in the meantime, we have the first big piece of this in the bank. And again, again, over and over again, thank you, healthcare workers. I really appreciate it. I am so thankful that you guys take care of us, take care of our health issues. I'm in line to get the vaccine here because I'm over 75. So, and Karen will be in the next group. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching. So after a long, hard day, Look at what I have to look forward to for supper. I know, I know, this is my, one of my favorites, Indian food. And salad, of course, enough salad. Uh, what exactly is it tonight we're going to have? Chicken tikka masala. Chicken tikka masala. See, I can't even say that. That's too big of a word. With rice and with naan and no pepperoni? No, nope, not tonight. So we do try to post up something motorcycle related almost every day and jobs that we do in the shop, painting, carbon fiber work, wheels, who knows what, you never know what's going to happen. Flying saucers come down to the shop to visit us, you never know. Every day is a surprise and we like it that way. And Karen seems to bake up something great every night. It's, it's a great life. I hope you enjoy sharing these little tidbits of my life and some of the work that I do, the work I'm very passionate about. And the biggest thing of all that I always say at the end, thank you so much for watching.